In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create sermon highlight reels inside of Premiere Pro. So you can see we're inside Premiere Pro here. I'm actually in the vertical space because we're gonna obviously convert this to vertical later on, but starting out, it's gonna be horizontal, so that's all right. Essentially what I have here is just the live stream downloaded from Resi, our streaming provider at our church. You can use any live stream for this. You can use actually a phone clip. Um, if you recorded it in service, you can use a camera and actually record a clip of your pastor or whoever's speaking, just walking across the stage speaking and pull sermon clips out of that. That usually looks really good because it really feels like you're in the room. But I'm going to show you just for the purposes today of how to pull sermon clips from your live stream. So if you're live streaming at all, this is super easy, really quick way to do it. And also say this is my personal workflow. I know there's a lot of different ways to do this and also a lot of different uh, softwares that you can do this in. I actually use DaVinci Resolve for a lot of my main editing. So I have another tutorial on how to do this exact same thing in DaVinci Resolve coming out soon. So keep an eye out for that. But today inside Premiere Pro, what I'm gonna do is click on our clip, open it up in the source monitor, and then you can see I now have an option to transcribe the source. So obviously you can do this now, you can do this once it's already in the timeline, but I find that it's generally easier to find good sermon clips after I've already transcribed it and I can see the text as I'm scrubbing through. So I'm just gonna hit transcribe and English, no, don't separate speakers. Cool, and then we'll just give that a minute to transcribe. So now that our source is transcribed, I'm gonna go ahead and drag our service video down onto the new sequence button. Really what I'll do at this stage is just listen through to a couple different parts of the sermon and find some good sermon clips that I wanna use. And to do that, say I want this to be a clip that I wanna use, then I'll just uh, use my shortcut to create a cut and scroll ahead till the clip ends and I'll just drag that up to the second video layer. So that just makes it really easy for me to zoom back out on the whole timeline. And as I go through, I can see how many clips I've picked out and then quickly go back and compare which one I like more. And that's just uh, how I do it personally. There's obviously a ton of different ways to do it. So for the purposes today, I've already added a marker of which clip I wanna use. So let me just expand the audio and I'll just put a cut where my marker is and drag that up to the second video layer. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, just duplicate this sequence. You can obviously just make a new sequence, but this is easy for me. So I'm just gonna call this clip one and double click to open the sequence. And then I just have to delete all the rest of the sermon that I don't want to use and then we're left with just our clip right here. So coming in straight away I can see that our audio levels are already really low but that's a really easy fix. I just have to hit G and set our normalized max peak to around negative two, negative three, just enough to um, obviously not let it peak but to give it a good level so that uh, people don't have to turn their phones up really high to hear it is all. So I'll just set that to negative two and you can see as I play it back, we're already getting a really good level. And I won't do any other audio adjustments on this because this is our live stream. So it already has really good audio that's mixed. Um, I could play with it if I wanted to, but um, I don't want to process it too much. Whereas if I recorded it with a phone or a camera or something and just use the on camera microphone, it's going to sound really echoey in the room. So in that case, I would suggest syncing that up and pairing it with your live stream audio or audio actually recorded from the microphone and it'll just make it sound so much better. So after that, I'm gonna go back up to our project panel, right click on our new sequence and go to auto reframe sequence. Uh, vertical is good and the default motion tracking is good and just hit create and it'll make this new sequence inside this bin that's been auto reframed. So if I double click on that, you can see that as I scroll through, it pans the position to actually follow our pastor as he moves back and forth. It's really slight in this clip, but if you have someone who's moving a lot more, this is actually really helpful. One uh, issue I've found with this is it actually sets it to a pretty low quality initially. So I just go back in and reset it to 1080 by 1920 which is vertical. And the next step is actually, I'm gonna go through and just make sure everything that's being said lines up with the transcript that we have. Like I mentioned earlier, if you aren't using the live stream, like a good quality um, audio source for your clip, sometimes the transcription does a lot worse job. So I don't expect there to be many issues, but I'll just go through and make sure all the words are right and add any 
punctuation or anything else that I want to add in there. So I really only needed one adjustment in there. Premiere's transcription actually um, does a pretty good job most of the time. But uh, as you can see, there aren't actually any captions on the video. So I'm just going to go up to the create captions button. And I always change these preferences. I like to put the maximum length in characters to around 35, 36, sometimes around 40. What that's going to do is keep the words pretty short on screen. And I think that helps a lot with TikToks and Instagram reels because the words are often just coming on the screen really fast, uh, but it helps you to read a little better than um, having a full line up on the screen all at once. So I like to bring that down just a little lower than the, than the default. And then uh, I'll select a single line and everything else is good. So I'll hit create captions. Just another personal preference of mine is I like to close out these gaps. So I'll just drag the previous caption to fill in these gaps and same with the very end because on TikTok or Instagram reels it does loop and I don't really like seeing the gap at the end and then the caption pops back up in the beginning when it uh, loops back around. But you can see that we have our captions on the bottom of the screen and it looks pretty good. But to really customize the color because I don't like how the initial default caption looks, I'm just gonna select all of our captions and then go over to our essential graphics panel and here we can adjust uh, the size and then change the position to be uh, in the center or adjust that slightly. And then at the very bottom is where a lot of your editing will be with the uh, colors. So I want to turn off the shadow adjustment um, and I'll turn on the background adjustment and maybe give it like just a black background at 100% opacity and then bring out the border just a little bit. And then I'm gonna change the font to like a Helvetica Now display. Um, bold is actually pretty good. Make it just a little bigger. Um, and then you can make it all caps if you want or keep it lowercase. Generally, I'll go with all caps for these kind of uh, captions because you don't have to deal with capitalization issues. And I think generally uh, it just looks a lot better on social media. And then usually what'll happen is especially when I make it all caps, the letters are spaced out a little more. So for example, this caption here actually went down to the second line and I want I want that to look the same as the caption before and after. So I'm just gonna click on that caption, go back to our text panel. And then what I'm actually gonna do is scroll back over here and find when he says the last half of that sentence. If your friends so like about there, and then I'm just gonna cut that caption. You can see back on our text panel, it's actually split that caption up into two. And then all we have to do is delete the text from the first one and the second one that we just made. And then if we watch it back. If you're friends with the world. Now it's, uh, it's split up, it's less words, but at least we're sticking with one line. And I think that's perfect right there. And then one more thing you might want to do in here is select one of your captions, go back to the essential graphics panel, and then under this track style option, you can create a new style. So maybe I want to just say clip one style and hit OK, and it'll add this style into your project. So if you create multiple sermon clips, you can quickly apply this style to different sequences without having to um, remember your previous settings or copy and paste or anything like that. Another tip is you can actually export this text style um, as just a file, and then you can import that into other Premiere projects. So with all that done, we're actually ready to export. So I'm just gonna go over to export, and then you can see the default, if you don't have this set up before, is a um, horizontal video. And obviously we want vertical, so I'm just gonna come down to the video tab and change the frame size to custom, uncheck the lock and set it to 1080 by 1920. And then uh, I just usually make sure under captions, burn captions into video is selected because I think sometimes by default that's off and then you export your video and it just doesn't have captions on it. So make sure burn captions into video is selected um, and I'll just export it into my downloads. H.264 is good. And then uh, I'll just check uh, render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. Uh, and then 20, 25 uh, bit rate is usually pretty good for social media. And I'll hit export. 
Fear of God will lead you to intimacy with Him. But fear of man causes you, according to Scripture, to become an enemy of God. If you're friends with the world because you fear man, the Bible says you'll be an enemy of God. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial showed you just how easy it is to create sermon highlight clips inside of Premiere Pro for TikTok or Instagram Reels. I also have another video coming out in the next coming weeks for DaVinci Resolve covering the same topics. So if you're interested in that or other church video tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. But if you have any other questions or suggestions, don't forget to let me know in the comments below.